Good afternoon and welcome to the Mariah Systems webinar. Today we will be talking about the reasons why to migrate from file net capture to IBM. We'll have an end of support as of March 3rd, 2012. Okay, so what was DataCap designed to do? Um, DataCap was built not only to do scanning, but more accurately to do intelligent capture. DataCap's backbone is a three-tier client-server architecture that allows for scalability throughout the enterprise. DataCap is both a server-based product as well as a web-based product. The web-based product allows an organization to scan, verify, and administer from any location. This is really important in today's environment where so many individuals work in a remote site. So let's continue here. Um, DataCap was built so that you can auto-classify a document and set, up a new, and set up new doc types in the process. It handles not only OCR, but it also handles ICR, which is handwriting, OMR, which is markup, markup recognition, so when you check boxes, and barcode recognition. 
DataCap does automated validation. So, for instance, if you're importing an invoice into DataCap, um, it will automatically go out to like an SAP system or some other type of ERP system and make sure that the business name, address, and PO numbers are accurate. DataCap does math calculations so that it not only reconciles each line item, but it can then also calculate the lines and make sure that all your totals are correct, like let's say on an invoice. Um, DataCap works with multiple ECM systems and also works with ERP systems like SAP asset management systems like Maximo and many other different repositories. This allows for not only a point solution within an organization, but a true enterprise system that can be utilized across all businesses. So here let me give you a brief overview of DataCap and its background. Um, DataCap has 22 years of experience. Um, IBM acquired DataCap in August of 2010 and with the release of version 8, has totally integrated DataCap into its suite of products. Um, as you can see, DataCap is used in a wide variety of industries, and it's also used across those corporations into all different types of business, business units. Um, here's a little bit about the DataCap workflow process. So this process above shows that we can receive documents from a variety of sources, the rules engine is applied, and then the image is cleaned up, the document's classified, it's, it locates specific fields, such as company name, quantity, and totals, then recognize additional things like signatures, check boxes on forms or barcodes for receiving of shipments. Um, the business rules are applied, and then the information is verified. If for some reason the information does not match up, the document is then sent to a supervisor or an individual that would handle exceptions. Once everything is approved, the data is exported into the appropriate system like FileNet. The data or document can be then interpreted by the business. So this can be used in many different things. You can use the workflow for not only um, something like accounts payable, but you can also use it in, like, say, insurance. You can use it in banking. You can use it for mortgage processing. You can use it for uh, many different things, even like in manufacturing, as you're looking at um, work order processes and those types of things. So now let's talk about the five, five phases of capture. Um, the first phase we're all familiar with, which is just the scanning of an image and storing it into a shared driver repository. Um, and then the second phase is basic recognition. Here, barcodes are recognized or specific information like names, addresses, and such are indexed. Um, in the next stage, we add document ID numbers and zonal OCR. So here, you can have the system recognize um, that all invoices will have a company name and address in a specific area, or that you'll find a PO located somewhere specific. Distributive capture um, is where you can verify data and move um, resource from a very time-intensive process to one where only exceptions are viewed and processed. And then the last is enterprise capture. Um, this is like your highest form of capture in that it allows organizations to scan, to verify, and to input documents and data from anywhere in the world. You don't need to be physically located at the scanning site to receive the information and process it. Let's say if your group is based globally, um, this would be a great solution. So if your corporate office is in the U.S. and you still have people working throughout the world in Europe and Asia, um, this is something that works and would be a great solution for you. Also, if you have your workforce and individuals that need to be able to work remotely from home or from any other site, this is going to give you the ability to do that. Now let's talk about the eight differences between file net capture and data cap. So first of all, um, the pricing model is very different. So um, the pricing model is one that is not volume-based, but it is per-user-based. So 
So if you have large volumes that you're currently dealing with within the capture product, you're going to have large maintenance fees as well. So you can realize a cost savings in, the, in that area. As I mentioned previously, distributive capture allows you to scan a document in one place and verify the information somewhere totally different. Automated doc classification allows you different ways to see what kind of document you're scanning. And DataCap allows for job monitoring and where a document is within the process. It allows reporting for, um, from all scanners. Um, DataCap allows for multiple recognition methods on the same document. This allows for greater accuracy in scanning and better recognition. Um, the system allows for line item detail. Um, it does math calculations, database lookups, and business rule enforcement. Uh, these are ways of assuring accuracy and double checking on your validations. The system also allows you to export a document or data to virtually any system within your organization. And again, it is a true enterprise solution that can be used throughout an organization. There are no longer restrictions to the businesses that um, use only the FileNet repository. Um, so now let's talk about um, an overview of just IBM DataCap Taskmaster. So, um, Taskmaster uh, can be used in a variety of instances throughout the corporation. Can you can use it as a centralized solution, a departmental solution, or even a web-based solution. Um, and all of these have the same functionality and scalability. Monitoring and web-based administration make it a solution that does not require expensive support. And reporting uh, can be done on a document level, again, batch level, or a user level. Um, DataCap identifies document type by a combination of pattern matching, keyword, and rule-based data location. There is no template setup required. DataCap Taskmaster learns new types of documents on the fly. Um, it also extracts machine printed data, or OCR, handwriting, ICR, checkboxes, OMR, and barcode data with multiple recognition engines, which reduces manual data entry. So let me talk about a couple of um, a couple of different types of applications that you will find in DataCap. So DataCap has an API application that processes invoice without manual data entry. It captures all line items, allows for validation rules um, on dates, math, and data types. Um, last week, if you were on our webinar, we had shown you an example of this, and Sean had demonstrated this for you. Now, DataCap Taskmaster Medical Claim Capture, um, this is pre-configured to capture 100% of the files on CMS. It is web-based or client-based and does validations. Um, this is something that can be used with a thin client and or with a thick client. Um, it has support for black claims. And again, you have all the validations. So it does lookups, it matches diagnosis, it applies business rules, it does math calculations, and it is HIPAA compliant. Let's talk about the add-on components to IBM DataCap Taskmaster. So here's several add-ons that you would have in Taskmaster. Um, you have connectors built for email and electronic documents, as well as for most ECM systems. Again, DataCap can be um, it can it can do almost any type of background. It it can be released to almost any type of background system within an organization. So again, you're not, um, you do not have to have file net in the background. You can have SharePoint, you can have OpenText. Again, you can have all different types of systems within an enterprise. 
So you can have your uh, ERP systems. Um, just about anywhere that you want the document released, it can be released. So with that, we're going to I'm going to turn it over to Sean Scott, and we're going to do he's going to do a brief technical discussion, and then he's going to do a data cap demonstration for you. Thank you, Beatrice, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sean Scott. I'm a pre-sales engineer with Mariah Systems. And I just want to give you a brief technical introduction into DataCap and how it's different from the file net capture and how you might be able to migrate the different processes from capture into DataCap. You can see here DataCap has what we call the rule runner service. That service runs on a server as a service that allows you to do a lot of the process that FileNet Capture might do in either hardware, uh, either the hardware in the scanner or perhaps a, an ADR card or a SCSI card. We actually migrate those processes to a software-based solution, which will allow you to scan in a document or pull faxes or pull uh, documents from an email system or an email box, as well as process zip files. After the document is ingested in capture, we actually go through a cleanup process. And that is where we actually cl uh, clear up some of the image, do some auto-rotate, uh, do some de-skewing, things like that, that typically and sometimes you might find in a client application. Here we're pulling all those processes onto the server, running in a background process. We also do some auto-classification of the document. In FileNet Capture, you usually have to batch your documents by a certain document class. In this case, you can mix and match all kinds of different document types, document classes, and DataCap can be configured to automatically classify those document types as well as adjust the index values needed to capture so that you're able to capture that information automatically. So there's no more need to pre-sort your documents, do a lot of the document prepping that you're doing with FileNet Capture. It also supports automatic redaction. Perhaps with HIPAA requirements, you need to black out certain uh, information, patient information. You can have rules uh, automatically redact some of that information and store it into your FileNet repository. Along with that, the background processes also do what we call the data capture. It supports ICR, where we're capturing handwritten information. It supports OCR, where we're capturing text information. It supports OMR for things like customer surveys, where people are checking boxes. And, of course, it supports barcode. Uh, a lot of people with FileNet Capture are forced to use barcodes to uh, separate documents or separate batches. In this case with DataCap, we're doing it on the server and we're doing it based on some intelligence and some rules. So there's no need to do that. So now we're able to do all of that on software in a background process and not affecting the end user. Along with that, we can do database lookups. After we've captured some information from OCR, we'll be able to take that information and do database lookups and either retrieve additional information or just verify the information that we captured. Perhaps we captured three fields and we want to validate that the three fields were read with 100% accuracy. We can do that with database lookups from an external system to verify that data. And as Beatrice had said earlier, it supports math, math calculations. So if some of that information we captured, we might want to do some addition subtraction to validate some of the data. And behind the scenes, it includes a very powerful business rules engine. And what I mean by business rules is essentially uh, it's a rudimentary business rule where you can do like if-then statements to validate some of your data. You know, if this occurs, do that. If this occurs and this occurs and this occurs, do that. So it's not a robust rules engine like you might find at an insurance uh, policy system, but it's a rudimentary uh, system that will allow you to make decisions on the documents that you capture as well as the data that you capture. For instance, um, a rule is built of actions. 
So I can take a library of actions, and if all those actions uh, happen to be true, it would process in a certain manner. And let's say if one of those items is not true, I might want to kick it out and deliver it to an administrator. And so actions are made up of rules. What DataCap provides is an action library, and it includes a library of FileNet actions, which are basically API calls directly to the FileNet repository. If you know with Capture, you have to set up, uh, you know, the different FileNet document classes that are available from the repository. This is where you would configure your FileNet actions um, to log on to P8, let's say, create a folder or update metadata or trigger a workflow process. And not only do we have a library of FileNet actions that we can use to build a certain rule, but those rules can be bound to either a specific document or specific field. So you may want to check the FileNet repository to make sure that we already have a claim file created. If not, we can make an API call from the action library by just simply configuring uh, a, a rule to pass in the claim number that we extracted from the OCR process and make the call to FileNet to create that folder. And of course, once the folder is created, we can pass the documents into that folder and store it automatically. So there's no need to um, have a, thir a second step in our process to queue up documents and then have them file via the FileNet folder. The DataCat application will automatically store those documents in the particular folder that's needed in P8. Of course, it also supports FileNet IS. If you happen to be an image services customer, it also has a library of actions to log on to IS to uh, set certain document class information and metadata information. So with that said, let me go ahead and do a demonstration. This is the Taskmaster client. This is typically what a user will see when they first log on to DataCap. It's broken down into two windows. The first window is what we call our operations window, and that includes all the different operations that a user has access to. Because I'm logged in as an administrator, I see all the functions, including background processes, that are available to a DataCap user. If you happen to be a scan operator, you may only see the scan icon. If you happen to be an accounts payable or a medical claims, claims clerk, you may only see the verify icon. The second window below here is what we call the job monitor. That lists all the different outstanding jobs or batches that are in the system. So with FileNet Image Services, most of that information is stored on the server. In this case, it is stored on the DataCap server, and then when we're done processing, we export that information into the FileNet Image Services library. So let me go ahead. I'm, what I'm going to do is uh, demonstrate scanning in uh, a dozen insurance-type documents of various different document types. Some will be claims. Some will be some policy information. But we'll automatically classify those documents and based on the document type, extract different fields from each different document type. So I'm going to go ahead and scan in those documents. And now I'm going to transfer to the background process so that I can do some of the background processing that DataCap is known for. And what I mean by background processing, I mean by it automatically despeckles. In this case, it takes out all the background noise. On this image, you can see above, there is a bunch of background information on the image. The image below is after we despeckle it, it's completely clean, and that's going to help with recognition rates. We also do automatic de-skewing. If you could see the top image is tilted to the right, our software will automatically straighten it out so that, again, we can increase our recognition rate. We also do reverse background. In this case, invoice number is written in white. 
we can reverse that, make sure it's in black so that the OCR engine will be able to read the information. We also do automatically rotating. We do ICR handprint recognition. We do OCR machine print recognition. And of course, it supports barcode. Along with that, we do a lot of data validation. We make certain fields that are configured in FileNet, if they're all alpha characters, we validate that that field is captured in alpha format. Same thing with if a, if a, if a field is numeric, we make sure that it's numeric. If it's a date field, we validate the date. And same thing if it's currency, we validate that it's a valid current currency value. We'll also be able to do in, intelligence on it where we can maybe check for a date range. We could compare two dates and uh, do something if it's older than 60 days, kick it out. Or if it's under 60 days, do something different. It also supports uh, mathematical calculations as well as data validation. Let's say I'm able to capture in accounts payable the remit and zip code and a vendor name that's in the invoice. We can actually use that to look up into our vendor master table in our ERP system and actually get the vendor ID number, which would typically wouldn't be printed on an invoice. So with that said, let me go back to Taskmaster. And now that the background processing is complete, let me show you what an end user would see to validate some of the data that we automatically extracted. And you'll also see how all the documents were automatically classified. Now, the first document that comes up is a new document that we haven't seen in our system. I know that because the document classification was not classified. So this is a new document to the system, and I'm going to manually classify it. Now, when I classify that, we're going to keep a library so that the next time a document like this comes in, we'll automatically know its document classification, and we'll automatically know which index values are configured on the FileNet image repository that are required to process this document. In this case, it's a correspondence document. And you can see we're capturing three fields, claim number, date mailed, and from. Now, a, a great feature with DataCap that you don't see with FileNet Capture is the notion of click and key. And what I mean by click and key is I can just click on the image invoice window and automatically capture that information via OCR. So I'm in the claim number field. I'm just going to click on the claim number. And if you can see, it took a screenshot of the snippet of the image of where I just clicked above the data entry screen. So this is an actual snippet of the image. And just below it is the data entry screen. And you can see it's pre-populated with the information that we captured through OCR. And if you can see, we actually read it with 100% accuracy. So if you see on the left-hand side, we're capturing data. On the right-hand side, we're viewing the image, but we're also clicking on the area where that information is stored so that the next time this document is processed, we'll know exactly where to capture that information. As well as, I can create a library of what we call labels. And labels will allow me to tell the OCR engine to look for particular strings in a document and capture that information. In this case, I can tell it to search for policy space number colon, look to the right, and capture that information automatically so that I may not even have to click and key it. The system will automatically capture that data from the OCR process. So now I'm going to click on the date mail screen, and now I'm just going to click on the, the field for the date, you see it automatically captures that information. And the same thing from the from. So now the system knows, based on this document type, where I can capture all that information so that it's going to be stored in our library. And our library stores what we call fingerprints, which is a snapshot of this document so that the next time it comes in, we're already familiar with it. We already know where we need to capture information as well as if I wanted to add additional fields to capture, I can easily do that from a configuration user interface where I just enter in the document index data from the FileNet system into DataCap and will automatically pre-populate a data entry screen so that I can easily capture additional information. 
So I'm going to go ahead and process this document. And the next document that comes up, you can see it was automatically classified as a premium notice. This is a form that we processed. We processed before. We've seen it. It's in our library. And it was automatically classified as a premium notice. <clears throat> Another thing you'll notice is that the data values that it captured are different than what we captured for correspondence. For premium notices, we just want to capture the policy number and the policy date. If you could see, we read it with 100% accuracy. And if I click on the policy number field, you'll see where in the form it's highlighted where we actually capture that information. Same thing if I click on the policy date, you'll see that the date for the policy date is highlighted. So we read that with 100% accuracy. In your organization, you may not need to deliver this to an end user. An end user may never see this if we read it with 100% accuracy. So instead of having Inflonic capture to uh, deliver documents to a user to index all that information, it's possible that you could process automatically 80% of your documents and never deliver to an end user for indexing. So that's something that's going to save you a lot of time and aggravation. So I'm going to go ahead and process this document. And you can see here's another correspondence document, similar to something that we've already seen. We've captured information through OCR. And if you notice the first field claim number, the snippet is highlighted with a, a yellow uh, highlight of the number one. And in my data entry screen, you'll see the number one is colored red. What that is telling me is that the OCR system read that below a 90% confidence level. And because of that, we have a business rule to deliver this document to an end user just to verify that. Because the claim number is very important. We want to keep a high threshold level of accuracy for our claim numbers. So we just want to deliver this to the end user to verify what the OCR engine read is correct. And I did verify it. It does look good. I can zoom in on that just to make sure it's not a 7. It is a 1, and everything looks good. So I can go ahead now and process this document because it's now 100% accurate. I'm ready to process. Now that data is going to go into my claim system. The document's going to go into my file net repository along with some of that data, and it's automatically going to be classified in a claim file on the P8 system. Again, here's a different document type where we capture different information. This is an explanation of benefits form, and we actually captured the claim number, the patient name, and the date of the accident automatically through our OCR software. So in this case, it was read with uh, not greater than 90% confidence level. In most cases, we will just go ahead and store this in FileNet, which might trigger a workflow process for the auditor. So I'm going to go ahead and process this document. And you can see this brings up a different document type with different fields. And one of the fields has a different color. And the reason that is, is because for some reason it did not pass our data validation for SSN. This is a social security number we're trying to capture. And if you can see, we did capture it with 100% accuracy, but for some reason it didn't pass validation. And to give a better idea of that, I'm going to go ahead and process it and see what the validation failed on. It says that the social security number should have a length of 11, but it only has a length of 9. And it's asking me if I want to override. I don't want to override it. I want to make sure that it's 11 characters because our claim system requires that there's hyphens in the Social Security number. And that's our way of validating that Social Security number that we might read from a third-party ISO claim search has the correct information. So I'm now going to go ahead and process that with 11 digits it passed validation, and now we're able to store that in the claim file as well as update our claim system. You can see here, this is a release in full document. We're actually capturing the claim number as well as the dollar amount that was released. In this case, this field is also red, and the reason it's red is because we actually captured the dollar sign in here. 
And we don't want to do that because our claim system only needs the total amount. It doesn't need the dollar sign. We can put some rules in there, too, to extract extraneous information like that on a field-by-field -field level. We could say if you see a dollar sign to strip it out or a pound English pound sign to strip that out. That just shows you the ability to validate the data prior to processing. So I'm going to go ahead and process this document. And the next document is a claim form. I'm just going to zoom this in so that you can see the entire claim form. It's a pretty complex form. And because it's a new claim, it does not have a claim number. There's nowhere in this file that, or this document that contains a claim number, so we were not able to capture it. What we were able to take was the I.O. number. And that I.O. number is prior to a loss, we actually create a temporary claim that we refer to before accepting the claim. So that's why the document does not include the claim number, but our claim system does have an I.O. number and a claim number. So I'm able to do a database lookup to our claim system to query by the name, the I.O. number, to get the claim number. So I'm going to click on the lookup button, and it's going to go out to the system and pull the claim number from our claim system. So it gives you the ability to do external database lookups. For instance, if you have an ERP system and you need to look up vendor information, you can easily do that. Uh, medical claim information, you can look up claimant information. Uh, it's basically open-ended as long as you can support a SQL call. It's as simple as just configuring uh, a couple of parameters in the workflow process of DataCat. And that's something that you typically do not see with out-of-the-box file net capture. Many file net customers actually develop their own custom applications to accomplish this task. In this case, it's built directly in to DataCat, and all you would have to do is configure the system based on the SQL call that you make in your custom application. So I'm going to go ahead and process that document. The next document that came in is a subrogation document, and we were able to capture the file number as well as the dollar amount that was used for the claim, as well as the deductible. So this is information that we might want to update our subrogation system automatically. So we captured that information. So I'm going to go ahead and process that document. And if you notice, I've had claim information, I've had subrogation information, I've had policy information, all three different document types in the file net system, but in this case, we can automatically classify it. We're not constrained by having to create a batch by document class. So this is something that is uh, obviously unique and different than file net capture. Okay, the next document that I'm processing is an auto loss report. And for that, we want to capture four different fields, one of which is insured. And because this field, you'll notice, is in yellow, and in my snippet, you'll notice there's three characters in yellow. It just wants to validate that it read the information correctly because if you notice in this loss report, the font is extremely small, and it may have read it below a 90% confidence level. If you notice here, it did interpret the O as a G. So I'm going to go ahead and change that so that it reads correctly and is now 100% accurate. So, and we can also do data validation on all three of these fields on our claim system to actually find out what that name is. We may not even need to deliver that to an end user. We can check maybe by policy number and location and say, okay, that is a, that's Google is the insured and pull that information automatically. Okay, now this is just a typical correspondence document. We were able to capture all of the information. One character happened to be under 100 or under 90 percent. I just validated. Everything looks good. And you can see in the image viewer where I captured that information. And I read it with 100 percent accuracy. And here again, here's an explanation of benefits where we're capturing all the information. One character looks like it's smudged a little bit, did not read at a 90% confidence level, but I verified it. It looks good. I'm going to go ahead and process. So that's the last document in our batch. The last step of the data cap process is now that we've captured all the data, 
and we've captured all the documents, we have an export application which is now going to break those documents into different document classes, write them into the Fonet repository, Okay, I think multi-page documents, um, you can actually capture information from the different multiple pages. Um, that is not a problem. We see it very often in accounts payable. Often you'll uh, be able to capture um, multiple pages of line item information by just clicking on one individual line. So what, what the uh, accounts payable application allows you to do is you can click and key the first line and there's a button that does find details, and then that loops through every page in the document and extracts all the line item information for those invoices. The same thing with multi-page claim forms as well as any other documents. You can zone a document and capture information off the second and third page if it's required. You can also break documents down if for some reason you have a multi-page TIF that includes maybe five different documents. It's possible based on the intelligent rec classification recognition to automatically break those documents into separate files as well. Okay, um, we had another one. Uh, can you configure TM and RR in a high availability environment or clusters? Yes, it, uh, TM stands for Taskmaster and RR uh, stands for Rule Runner. And Rule Runner is a service that 
uh, can be clustered and can be distributed. The same thing with Taskmaster, as well as the web applications. There's thin client applications that are available with DataCat, and they can be made in a web farm for high availability as well and load balancing. Um, also, within a batch, can index values be carried from one doc to another, i.e., like policy numbers? Yes, it can be done with custom rule development. Um, that is a common practice. Um, it's not 100% out of the box. There will have to be a rule to say capture this, store it, and pass it on to the remaining document types to uh, you reach a certain level for those documents. It is a common practice. It is something that we have developed for some of our customers, uh, and it is available. Okay. Um, how is the code configured if additional customization is needed? Uh, it supports custom rules through VBScript and some .NET programming. So underlying is the VBScript, um, where you can actually make calls to web services, um, you can just do some, maybe a, your custom data validation could be configured in that as well. But the underlying is VB script for any custom rule development. Um, so IBM Capture provided an API to interface with its objects. Um, is there an API for data cap components? Um, they're really isn't an API set to write your own custom data cap applications, but you can create those custom actions through VBScript and make them available in rules within the data cap environment, um, and as well as there is a UI development environment that if I wanted to add or if I want to create my own custom application, I can create similar to like a visual basic uh, .NET environment where I can create custom forms and make custom calls to databases all within that environment. So it's not a direct API set, but more of a development tool, a development kit that between configuration and coding, you're able to create your own custom applications. The thought is that, um, you know, with FileNet Capture, many of the applications were forced to be custom applications. We're trying to take the approach where you're not forced to do that, but able to configure applications uh, e more easily and uh, as more quickly. Okay. Um, we have another one here. Um, can you perform document separation from a single fax transmission? Like an example would be here, um, they say provider faxes multiple documents, i.e. claims, uh, medical records, and other supporting docs in one fax transmission. Um, these should be split into separate documents and back end, in the back end document repository. You can. There, there's an, uh, an add-on uh, to the system for receiving faxes, and there's an additional add-on for auto classification. It supports IBM's InfoSphere database, and the idea of that is very similar to what I demonstrated. You classify the documents over time, and using full-text OCR in those documents, you're able to put intelligence in there to uh, determine the document type, as well as determine the, the beginning and ending of a document. You know, typically you would do that with barcodes in your current file that capture applications, but you can actually configure rules to say if you see a certain fingerprint in the library that that is the beginning of a document and that would uh, also trigger the end of the document for the previous document so that you're able to split a 10-page fax into two or, or five two-page documents. We also have the ability to do that with electronic documents if for some reason you have a vendor that's sending 100 invoices in a PDF file the system can be configured to burst that PDF into separate TIFF files or separate PDF files for processing. Uh, and all that is based on the intelligent classification that's built into DataCat with its InfoSphere add-on.
Okay, so um, the next one is, is migration from FileNet to DataCap um, of logic code and process actually possible? Um, and um, or is it a um, complete rebuild? It's, I wouldn't call it a complete rebuild because the architectures are so drastically different. Uh, it's not as simple as, um, you know, taking your configuration and, and modifying it and, and porting it into this new environment. Because the architecture is significantly different, most likely you're going to want to re-architect your application to, to begin with. So it really isn't that possible, but there are a lot of things that you can leverage. Um, and actually, DataCap does support uh, leveraging some of your file net capture processes components. Um, and we could talk about that in more detail, but it does support some of the file net capture functions within a call. So that if you didn't want to rewrite your application, you can kind of leverage your capture processes. Um, the next one is, is if the documents were imported, an example, Word or Excel, um, does the image viewer support point and click index indexing um, as was shown um, for some of the TIFF images in the demo? I'm sorry, which which viewer are we talking about? The data cap viewer? Yes. Yes, yeah. I, I demonstrated simple click and key where it uh, automatically recognizes the data and OCRs that information. Um, there's a there's another question here. Um, is there any way um, to scan files to FileNet without any rules? No, because the a the action library is specific to the FileNet APIs. You do need those actions to create a FileNet session, to create a document to create a folder, to update metadata, as well as you have to have certain security levels with that user to make those calls. But you do need the, the uh, what we call the FileNet action libraries that come with DataCap. Okay. Um, I think that's it for um, the questions that we have right now at this moment. Um, certainly, if you have any other questions, you're more than welcome to email or call either Sean or I, and we'd be more than happy to help you with those. Um, the next slide, many people are going to be saying, okay, next steps, and how do I get started with this process? So Mariah has um, created a quick start solution. Um, so the company's migrating from file net capture to data camp can better understand what the project looks like. Um, they can also understand where they're going to find benefits and an ROI and what new business units within your corporation will be able to benefit from implementing a scanning solution and specifically data cap. So um, here is a brief slide that's going to go over that, kind of give you what um, we're going to do is in orange and what um, our deliverables are, are in green. Um, I'd certainly be more than happy to share uh, more information on this with everyone. As, um, and so uh, I'll be sending out some uh, further information on um, what this is and what some of the things we do in that. Um, just so that you know, we do have a couple more upcoming DataCap webinars, and here are the dates. Um, if you haven't received an invitation already, there will be more invitations coming out this week, so be uh, keep your heads up and look for those within your email. And then our last slide is the contact information. So here's mine and Sean's contact information if you need it. Um, I'll leave the slide up for a few more moments. And uh, certainly, again, we'd be happy to answer any questions. And um, we look forward to speaking with you again. So thank you very much for attending. Already muted. A wrap.